Once a filmmaker has finished their short film, what should they do? So when you finish your short film, you have to decide, how do I want to, what do I want to do with this? Sometimes I honestly think you're not going to show it to anybody. It's, you know, it was a learning experience. There's a lot that's not good about it and don't show it to people. But often you've made it because you want to show it to people. There's a reason you put all that time and effort into it. Now you have to decide, well, what do you want to do with it? And there are basically two routes. One is the festival route, because that is the uh, screening for short films and, and a, making them profes professional projects professional things that people will see through the festival circuit and launches you as a filmmaker and gives you an entree into the professional filmmaking world. So festivals is one world. And if you want to do that, you know, you, you it costs money. <laughs> so you need to decide how much money you want to put into that and how much money you can do and, you know, set up a marketing budget, frankly, to do it that way. So festivals is definitely a legitimate, like a lot of short films are made for the festival circuit. A lot of films are just going to be put on YouTube. You know, we made them digitally. I want to share them with the world. And it's funny because a lot of times people think, oh, I don't want to have my film on YouTube. And then later they're like, 10,000 people have seen my short film. There's no way unless you, that you could get 10,000 people to see it on the festival circuit. You know, so if your point is that you wanted to communicate with people and have people see your film, how amazing is YouTube? It doesn't charge you or, or Vimeo. There's other places. There's actually a lot of places you can put your film online, but you know, how amazing is that, that you can get your film seen by people that way? And there's places like Short of the Week where they want to, you know, put your film out and you put it in an arena where people are actively looking for short films and seeing it that way. So there's a lot that you can do with your short film online. The negative thing about putting your film online is that if you want to later do festivals, festivals still don't like it if your film's been online because they're like, why should our patrons pay money to see your film when they could actually just see it for free online? Same thing if by some miracle, uh, your film could potentially be Academy Award uh, qualification. They do not want it to be broadcast first before you're qualified. So people put their film online and then they can't be considered for the Academy Awards. Very few films actually, you know, get nominated for an Academy Award or considered for the Academy Awards. So I wouldn't kill yourself about that. And But if you think your film is an Academy Award kind of film, especially animation or doc, think about that and be smart about it uh, if that's the venue you want to go. Um, and then, you know, sometimes the films can be put on TV uh, and that's a fabulous thing too um, if, if that's an option or, you know, maybe they've been made for commissioned by TV or whatever. Um, and, but everything has to be done right when you're going to put it on TV, obviously, all the rights and et cetera, et cetera, have to be done perfectly. So you need to think about where you see this film going and what to do with it. I'm sorry, you can also, um, and this is something I love to do, is have your own screening of the film. Very easy to do it in your home or even rent a theater. It's surprisingly easy to rent a theater or speak to your like local film society and see if they're willing to put the short in front of a feature film that they're showing. You're a local. They know you. Hopefully you're a member of the film society. They want to encourage you. Quite often those kind of screenings also don't count as festival screenings so that you can do that and still do the festival circuit and not have it count as like your debut or anything like that. So, you know, figure out where you want to show this and then try to get it done. And, and um, you know, think outside the box, as they say. It doesn't have to be a festival. It doesn't have to be online. Think about film festivals. Think about other places that might potentially want to, you know, show your film in some way. Um, but don't think that that isn't a big part of the process. If you've made this film to be seen, it's going to take a lot of time. I know filmmakers who've been very successful in the short film circuit and had to spend like two years following their film on the festival circuit, submitting it, making sure it got seen, occasionally getting to go to the festival, et cetera. And then that becomes a full-time job, whereas they made that film because they want to get hired to do something else. So sometimes you don't see films after a little bit because the filmmaker got what they wanted out of it. They don't want to keep on sending it on the festival circuit. It's like, I've already got an agent out of this. I've already got a job doing something else. I don't need to spend more time in the festival circuit. So when films are like big rock star -y kind of films that way, they win awards and everyone's interested in them. The filmmaker is often like, I'm not interested so much in doing that anymore because I got what I, what I want out of it. And so uh, then festivals will start uh, offering incentives too to make, to make it worth your while. So if you luck out and get something that's really, um, you know, that special, special film, you can charge screening fees. You can, uh, you know, they'll ask you to apply for the festival and they'll waive the fees for submissions. There's a lot of things can happen if you, get one, if you luck out and have one of those films that everybody wants to show. And I know those fees vary, but what, what's the typical short film entry fee? So here's the nice thing about short films. Sometimes it's free. Sometimes it's free for students. Sometimes there's a student fee. Sometimes there's a uh, just normal fee. 
There's also, always very important, a uh, early fee, a late fee, and uh, I guess standard fee or whatever. Um, so you really want to look at that because that can be a world of difference. Like if you wait for the late fee and we all tend to be procrastinators and kind of be like, oh, wait until the very last minute. Okay, now I'm sending it in. Um, that could be the difference, like $100 for the late fee. Whereas if you sent the early bird fee, it was $25 or $35. So, um, you know, I would recommend don't be that procrastinator and send it late only for financial reasons. Also, you can really look on a film freeway and see, well, where doesn't, where's a free to submit my film? Um, and, you know, places that you have re relationships with, like your local film society, shouldn't charge you. You know, they should be willing to look at it for free. And so there's a lot of ways you can do it for free without submitting any money. But film festival submissions is expensive, you know. And it is a joke that, like, my God, I probably spent more money on my festival submissions than I spent on my actual film. Sure. And, you know, and ask yourself, really, what, what do you want out of it? Because sometimes it's just gratifying to go there, be part of the Q&A, and, and show it with friends, and then you feel like you've accomplished something. Yeah, and who knows what will happen as a result of that screening, too, you know? Something else could happen that you weren't even thinking of, and then that's great, and that's what you wanted out of it. Do you often hear from filmmakers that their goal is to make a viral video? Viral is something that people used to talk about a lot, you know, like, oh, it's going to become a viral hit. And, um, you know, even today, if you're able to, if something happens like that, more power to you. But often it's, there's no um, magic formula for that. And it's also no longer like, if you build it, they will come, that you can just put it up and all of a sudden, oh, it becomes a viral video. Some people can kind of plan on it a little bit, like, oh, uh, I know a filmmaker who did this kind of uh, raunchy father-son story that he launched um, on Father's Day and did this whole kind of press release about how it was gonna launch on Father's Day. And so people who are writing stories about, you know, what to do, watch to watch on Father's Day or whatever, could reference that. So he really thought it all out and had a hook to make it of interest and did something in that way. But in general, um, I don't think, uh, you know, a viral thing is kind of a miracle, you know, that there's some reason that people start sharing it, you know, like it gets on Reddit and a lot of people start, you know, so some ways you control it and some ways you can't control it. Um, in the old days, there used to be like Star Wars fan films that had this built-in fan base that people loved these Star Wars things and there wasn't so much Star Wars um, material being made. So people, those kind of videos could go viral, but now there's so much Star Wars stuff officially done that I doubt you're gonna get a viral Star Wars video happening. You know, it's like there's enough talk about the official stuff going on. Um, so I think it's impossible to kind of like pre-program something going viral you never know how it could happen and if it happens more power to you and you know ride that storm as much as you can and be prepared the one thing you can do is be prepared for what happens next because you know it's like so now something got viral and people are talking to you and they want to when people start talking about to you because like your film did well at the festival or did well online or whatever, they don't really care about that actual short itself. They're not going to do anything with it. You know, they're not looking at it to, you know, put in their movies or something like that. They're looking at uh, like, you have talent, you put, you've got their thumb on the, you know, the pulse of excitement now. I want you to do that for me. What can you do for me? So you need to be prepared with, I have a feature film that I want to get made, you know? I have uh, this uh, pilot for a TV show I'd like to shoot. Or would you look at my pilot for my TV show? I want to get that made. You have something else that they can be involved with that, you know, now that you have heat, you can capitalize on that heat. And But it's not your short that's going to, they're interested. They're interested in the talent that's shown in the short and the attention that you have, but they want to know what's next. And that's where a lot of filmmakers make a huge mistake is they don't have a what's next. Their film does really well in the festival circuit. People say, oh my God, this could be a feature. And you'd be like, talk to me in a year when I actually write the feature. It's like, you want to be, I, and I'm writing the feature. Oh, I'm on the finishing touches of the feature. You want to be ready to go with that thing that they can capitalize on. And, you know, the heat can turn into something that can earn you money um, and move the, uh, the next step on your career. Do you think some people, though, they think this this won't happen? They, that this is, I'm just putting this out there and, and, and I'm not going to get this attention. And that's why they don't properly plan? Yeah, or, or, you know, it's such a big boulder to push up the hill, right? You've had to finance, write this thing, finance this thing, get it up and put it in somewhere, and then deal with all the tsunami of all the success 
you haven't had time to write the feature film. This whole thing took you forever and you did it all yourself. You know, so it wasn't like uh, you had a hundred things in your drawer that you're ready to do next. It takes a lot of work. I know a lot of people who, you know, that was it. They did that short film and then had all that hoo-ha and then now what? And then you're cold again and you either have to make another film or, uh, I also know people who just love making shorts. And so they're going to follow that up with, you know, I'll have another short next year. And like every year they have another short film and they send it out and same thing. Everybody loves it. And somehow they can afford to do that. And, uh, they're professional, quite often it's animators. Um, they're professional short filmmakers who get to do whatever they want, you know, and turn it into that.